Hello, this is one of a series of physics videos to prepare you for tests. Hello, this is one of a series. Hello, this is one of a series of physics test prep videos. Uh, this one focusing on energy concepts. Uh, first off, our content in language objectives. A content objective is I can review for an upcoming test over energy. A language objective is I can ask questions about energy content that I'm not familiar with. Uh, first, just an energy kind of one minute review. Uh, first off, there are numerous types of energy that we're going to discuss, but uh, potential energy, kinetic energy, and work are the three. Potential energy has to do with objects that are off the ground. Uh, potential energy, or E sub P, is equal to mass times gravity times height. Uh, kinetic energy is energy in motion, and if an object is moving, it has kinetic energy. Uh, e sub K kinetic energy is equal to one half times mass times velocity squared. Uh, work. Uh, work is uh, just a push or a pull uh, over some distance. Uh, work is equal to force times distance. And we're going to ignore the cosine theta if it's pulled at an angle. Uh, but work is force times distance. And then the last concept related to what we're going to do today uh, involves the law of conservation of energy. And what that says is your energy before plus or minus work is equal to your energy afterwards. It's an accounting for energy. Energy can't be created or disappear. Uh, it's just transformed. Uh, in some way or another. Uh, so first off, there are three energy test prep questions uh, that you can go through on your own. Uh, pause this video and see if you can go through an answer. And then once you're finished going through those, uh, go ahead and hit play uh, and we'll go through the answers together afterwards. Question number one, what type of energy does an object have for each of the following scenarios? Uh, for scenario A, an object is three meters off the ground. Uh, what I think uh, first question I'd ask myself, if you're trying to figure out what type of energy you have, is something off the ground? If yes, it has potential energy. Uh, second question, is an object being pushed? Uh, if something is pushed or pulled, if there's a force or you see Newtons, uh, there is work involved. And then option three, is an object moving four meters per second? Uh, what type of energy does it have? Uh, if it's moving, uh, that means it has velocity and so there's kinetic energy. So those are the three questions I would ask myself. Is it off the ground? Is there a push or a pull? Uh, is there movement to help you determine what type or types of energy you have? Question number two involving potential energy. It says if a ball has a mass of 1.5 kilograms and is four meters off the ground, how much potential energy does it have? Uh, you're given mass, you're given height, and uh, it's asking you to solve for potential energy. The one factor it doesn't give you is acceleration, and acceleration on Earth is always going to be 9.8 uh, meters per second per second. So gravity, uh, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second. So energy potential that you're solving for is 1.5, that's your mass, times 9.8, that's acceleration due to gravity, times 4 is your height in meters off the ground. Uh, for a total potential energy, or E sub P, of 58.8 joules. The third problem is definitely the most difficult here. It involves conservation of energy. For conservation of energy problems, you're gonna to need to uh, determine more than one type of energy and do an accounting for where some of it go. Uh, it says a skydiver with a mass of 75 kilograms jumps out of an airplane 3,000 meters above the ground. After deploying her parachute, she lands with a speed of 12 meters per second. What work is being done by the parachute? Uh, in this problem, you need to figure out what's your energy before, what's your energy afterwards, and it asks you to solve for work. Uh, so beforehand, you are off the ground, and so you're going to have potential energy. Uh, at the end of this scenario, you are just about to land, so you're not off the ground anymore. Uh, and you're moving at a velocity of 12 meters per second, so you have kinetic energy. And so your energy before is potential energy. Uh, you are solving for work, so there's some friction, there's some force that's acting on this parachute. Uh, and then you end up with kinetic energy at the end because you're moving. And so your mass times gravity times height before minus work that you're solving for since you are being slowed down due to friction uh, air resistance with that parachute is equal to one half times mass times velocity squared afterwards and so 75 is your mass times 9.8 is gravity uh, acceleration due to gravity times 3000 uh, which is your height mass times gravity times height is going to give you a potential energy before of 2,205,000 joules your energy afterwards is one half times mass times velocity squared. So one half times 75, you have the same mass uh, before you land. Times velocity 12 squared uh, gives you 5,400 joules afterwards. 
And so where does all of that energy go? It doesn't disappear. It's being lost due to a force, a force of friction acting over those 3,000 meters as you drop. And so how do you solve for work? You're just going to isolate work. Uh, what I would do is add work to both sides, subtract 5,400 from each side. And so you have a tremendous amount of energy that's lost, uh, 2.199600 joules uh, lost, over 2 million uh, joules lost due to work. Uh, because if all of that potential energy had been turned into uh, kinetic energy, you would die when you hit the ground. Uh, that is the end of this video, summarizing energy concepts, so potential energy, kinetic energy, work, uh, as well as conservation of energy topics to review for a test over these concepts. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great day.